Hi, good morning, class two. Today is October 5th, Monday, October 5th, 2020. Uh, I believe this is our seventh week of school, I think. I can't remember, sixth or seventh, but I'm pretty sure it's the seventh. Okay, so this is our history lesson for today. You, I gave you a handout that looks like this, and it says history 10 and 11. All right, so we are going to do this. It's going to take us two days to finish this. We're going to work on it today, Tuesday, and on Thursday. So today's video is history number 10. And when we finish it, you're going to watch his, uh, video history video number 11. Okay? I don't want you to get confused and be waiting for a different, you know, to finish this on this video. We're not going to finish it today. All right. So make sure, please write your name on the paper. I have a lot of students, more than half the class, that are not writing your names on your papers. I need you to write your names on your papers because I'm keeping all your papers in your notebook binder. And if it doesn't have a name, you're going to end up getting a notebook binder with nothing in it. <laughs> hey, mom and dad's going to say, what have you been doing all year? Your, where's your work? And I have it in a stack of papers with no names okay please write your name on your paper i already did the work of putting the date on there for you all right okay so we're going to finish up well on thursday we're going to be finishing up chapter three on civil government and i'm going to tell you ahead of time that at the top of your page there's always going to be some review questions before we start the lesson the first, I think this is the third time I've given you review questions, and it's the same thing. It's what we already learned in the previous lessons, and we, re we repeat it quite a bit because it's something that you need to remember, and it's something that you're going to be seeing, not just in my class, but in all the other classes as you move up to the other classes. This is something that it's not just for today, and then we forget about it. You need to understand what these terms mean as long as you're at CLIP, all right? But the what I'm going to do is I'm not going to give you the answers. You're gonna write what you remember, what that means. The first one says, what is government, right? We've been um, six weeks of history already, but let's say, we I think we lost one week. So five weeks of history already, and we've been talking about government, self-government, civil government, and this week I didn't put liberty on there. I should have, but um, there's uh, liberty. So I, you need to write down what is government? What do you remember what government is? It's two things. I'm gonna give you clues, all right? Then I want you to write what is self-government? And I don't want you to use government, okay? Don't use the word government. What is self-government? And it should only be two words also. What is civil government? All right, um, and you can use two, two to four words to explain what civil government is. I'm gonna keep asking the same question every time we do history and I'm not gonna give you the answers, okay? And so you might as well learn them and try not to forget them. Put them on flashcards if you need to. Memorize what these meanings are, okay? So today we are going to be reading out of chapter three in your textbook, all right? It's on this lesson, it's required to re read page 11 and 12, but I like to review and go back what we learned last week on civil government. So what I do is I do the reading, uh, page nine and 10, and I'm gonna read a little bit fast so that I don't expect you to keep up if you can't keep up. But when I get to page 11, I want everybody, including um, Nathan, Dabi, Josias and William to put your finger on the word on the first word see right here and and that by this time I will slow down because I want you to read with me I want you to look at every word as I'm reading it and moving your finger across when I stop to explain something you leave your finger there that way when I pick up the reading you're not lost and you and you know where we're at okay because as I'm reading I will stop and explain things to you Leave your finger there, all right? I really want you to follow me when I read when we read. As we re as we are reading, we're also 
um, stopping to answer our questions. So our first question, well, I'll, I'll tell you what the first question is after, let me review really quick. So chapter three is on civil government and it uses the, the verse from the book of Romans, um, chapter 13, verse four, for he is the minister of God to thee for good. Okay. For he is the minister of God for you, for your good. All right. This is review. What is minister? Do you remember what minister is? We looked it up in the Webster's Dictionary. Minister is someone who serves, who helps, who um, does, uh, who, who does work to provide, not provide for you, but to help you to see to it that um, something is taken care of. One of your needs might be taken care of. It's also to protect. All right. So, People can be ministers, just like a pastor is a minister, a leader is a minister, um, teaching could be a minister. Um, people who serve other people are ministers. But the civil government, our government is also a minister. It's not a person, but it's a body, a group of people who are doing a work to serve you. All right? So civil government is a minister. So when the verse says, for he is the minister, it's talking about the civil government. He is a minister of God for you, for your good. All right. So I'm going to begin reading on chapter nine and I'm going to go quickly because this is just review for you guys. For over 1000 years after Christ, I don't know if I can see, let me, I'm going to tilt this up so you can see my timeline. See the timeline up there? And I don't know where my foot went. Okay. My timeline starts at creation, way down there. Way over there. And this is the timeline up until Christ was born and crucified. So but Christ was born and he crucified. Now, the time keeps going and it says in our book, for 1,000 years after Christ left us, most people did not have a Bible. Most people, very few people had a Bible. Finally, when men had the Bible, they learned that they should govern their own actions. Did you hear that? When they got a Bible, they learned. They learned things that they didn't know. They were ignorant. They learned that they should govern themselves. Just like we teach you here at CLIP to, to govern yourself. It's called self-government. God teaches us that every family is to govern itself. So every family should govern itself and make sure that they are doing the right thing. Nobody should have to come and tell you how to behave if you're, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. I don't think you want people to come and tell you. I mean, as a child, yes, you are under the government of your mom and dad until you're an adult because you're learning how to self-govern yourself. You haven't learned how to self-govern yourself yet. Okay, so they learned how to govern themselves as families live together in cities and nations, their liberty to govern themselves must be protected. So every family should govern themselves, but nobody should come and try to tell them what to do if they're doing the right thing. So that means that liberty that they have to do what was right had to be protected and make sure nobody took it away. So by reading God's word, men also learned that God had a plan. He had, he, they learned two things. Well, more than two things, but pertaining to self-government. They learn that God has a plan for nations and they learned how nations should be governed. So they, they learned that they had to be governed and they learned how to do it, all right? As men studied the Bible and learned about self-government and civil government, they learned that God planned for civil government to protect those who were doing good. So they learned that Self-government is for you to govern yourself. Civil government was for those to protect you because you were doing the right thing. Because there's always evil out there and evil is always trying to take to overcome good. So we need to protect ourselves. Just like um, uh, I have, just like I remember our verse, Proverbs 4.23, 
keeping our hearts with all diligence. That's protecting our hearts. We protect ourselves. But we need also to make sure that someone doesn't try to come and take that away. That's what civil government is for. Um, they also learned that God planned for civil government to punish those who were doing evil. It was also to punish those who were not doing good. They chose not to do good. So we need to protect ourselves from people who choose to do evil. History also teaches that without the Bible, civil government has not always followed God's plan. So without government, we cannot follow God's plan. God has a plan for government. We must have government, whether it's internal or external. Someone else doing it for you or you do it yourself. It's better if you do it yourself, right? So his, uh, as men learned that they could govern their own actions and their own families by the Bible, they wanted civil government to govern the way God planned. They wanted civil gov government to protect their liberty. And liberty is to do what is right. That's what liberty is. The right to do what is right. Men had to learn from the Bible what God planned for civil government. All right. So now our lesson begins here on chapter, I mean, on, on page 11. So put your finger here and I will slow down so you can keep up with me. Our first question is going to be, how do we have liberty in our hearts? How do we have liberty in our hearts? Excuse me. And that's more of a review question. So before we start reading, remember what it, what we read in chapter two. How do we have liberty? We have, men, all men are sinful. We're all sinful. So we have to put in God's word in our heart so that we think like God. We have the mind of Christ so that our thoughts will govern our speech, will govern our actions, will govern our feet where we walk, who we associate with. So we learned a verse in, in chapter 2 that tells us how to protect our heart that we might live and, and not live in sin and have liberty. If you have sin, you have no liberty. Sin keeps you in bondage. Sin, does, you, sin makes you a slave. All right? You don't... You, Anything that is not from God will keep you a slave. It will keep you in sin and you will not have liberty and you will do things that you don't want to do. Sometimes you don't want to do something, but you do it anyways, right? So that is sin. That is, um, you're, you're in bondage. We want to be free. We, we live free by living the word of God. So we remember we studied the, the question number one. Your answer is going to be, how do we have liberty in our hearts? By keeping our hearts with all diligence, we protect. Remember, keeping means protect or guard. We watch what goes into our hearts with all diligence. That means constantly, constantly. We don't, we don't let down. We, we're always watching what's coming into our hearts. We're careful what comes into our hearts. We feed ourselves with the word of God to give us good thoughts and good actions and good decisions. And, and that... When you do that, you will be able to self-govern yourself. All right? So if you need to pause it, go ahead and pause. I'm going to continue with number two. It says, if we do not obey God in our hearts and follow God's words in our lives, will we have liberty? If we do not obey God, like he tells us in the Bible, if we don't put his word in here and do what he says, and we follow what he says in our lives, are we going to have liberty? Okay, I'm not going to answer that for you. I want you to write down what you think. It can just be a yes or no answer. And, you, and if you want, you can say, if you say yes, why? If you say no, then tell me why. All right. Um, let's read from chapter, I mean, page one. It would take many, many years to change civil government. First, the people had to learn to govern themselves. Learn, uh, being self-governed is a learning process. It takes time. It's not overnight. You read the Bible every day. You learn what God has for us, the plan that he has for us, um, how he keeps us protected from evil. And we do what he says. We don't just read it. We learn and we do. We learn what he, he says and we do what he says. 
but people had to learn how to govern themselves. Leaders had to be prepared to make laws according to God's word. So in government, laws should be made according to what the Bible says, not just what man thinks is right or wrong, because we are sinful. We do not, uh, we don't have good in our hearts. Only God, God's word can put good in our hearts. Rulers, which are leaders, had to punish those who did evil. So that's what civil, civil government does. It protects those who do good and punishes those who do evil. The study of history shows how God used men and women to lead in changing civil government. So a nation who wants to, who wants to have a civil government needs to do it God's way, and it takes time. People need to be prepared. All these people that you see up on my, look up here on my timeline, God prepared them ahead of time to do what they did in history, okay? God is preparing you that you may be a leader and do things according to God's plan, according to the way God wants. It's God's will, not ours. God's will is perfect. Ours isn't. The study of history shows how God used men and women to lead in changing civil government History shows how hard it was to have good self-government. Listen carefully. It was hard to have good civil government and how hard it was to protect liberty. It's hard to protect liberty. It's not easy, okay? We have to constantly be fighting evil forces that don't want good in this world. Some men and women died so others would have liberty. It's so hard that people had to die, that you and me could have liberty. It cost thousands of people to die to protect our liberty that we have now. So once we have it, it's easier to hold on to it and do what we need to do to keep that, um, that liberty than to lose it and try to get it again. Because trying to get it again, guess what's going to happen? People are going to have to die again. And people died in wars. Sometimes you have to go to war, and usually the ones that go to war first are the young men. If we go to war in a few years, which I don't believe we are, um, but you know, only God knows, and you happen to be 18 years old, 18, 19, 20, guess who's going? The, the young men are going to war, and they're going to have to die to get our liberty back. So it's easier to learn what God has for us and do what God says so we don't lose our liberty. So let's go to, we answered number one, we answered number two. How do we have liberty in our nation? How do we have liberty in our nation? That's number three. We're answering number three. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. Let me see. Number one was how do we have liberty in our hearts? And that was keeping our hearts with all diligence. Number two, how do, we, how do we not obey God in our hearts? I'm sorry. If we do not obey God in our hearts and follow God's word in our lives, will we have liberty? If we don't follow what God says, if we don't read his word, we don't do what he says, and we don't do it how he says it, are we going to have liberty? No, we're not. Only we, when we do it God's way are we going to have liberty as a person, as a family, as a city, as a state, as a nation, okay? If families don't have liberty, the nation will not have liberty. If families don't have liberty, your city won't have liberty. If all the families don't have liberty, okay? The majority of the families have to have liberty in order for the city to be, have liberty, in order for the state, and on down the line, the nation, okay? Number three, how do we have liberty in our nation? How do we have liberty in our nation? Okay, uh, let me see how much room do you have left to write? Let me write that for you. Uh, in our nation. Okay. This is how we have liberty in our nation. The individual, one person, each person, needs to be free from sin, to have liberty, and be self-governed. That's how a nation becomes free. It starts with the individual and then the family, all right? 
Um, let me collect the name. You free the individual. Um, yes. Okay. Tell them. Give me three minutes. Okay. I'm making my dots bigger so you can see them, but when you dot your eyes, you don't have it doesn't have to be that big. Uppercase T, the individual needs to be free from sin, to have liberty and be self-governed. Right? So I'm gonna stop there. The video already went kind of I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting to get farther in my video. So we're gonna stop our lesson there. And on Thursday, we're gonna pick up and left, and hopefully we can finish the rest of it. This might turn into three lessons, I'm afraid, but we'll see. All right, so go ahead and pause your video. I'm going to turn off my video now. That way you can write down, and this is for question number three. All right, and make sure that you answer your review questions. If you don't remember, go back and read chapter two. All right, if you have any questions, call me or text me. I'm here to help you, okay? Or you can even come by and visit me, and if you want me to you know, help you understand something, whatever, call me. All right. Bye-bye.